I got an email asking for some help with some of the solving systems of equations using elimination. So an algebraic technique. Um, and so I just grabbed a few questions out of the homework assignment that I didn't assign because I don't want to just do homework for you. Um, so I'm going to do these by elimination. Um, and it is just kind of extra practice. Um, the biggest concept about elimination that you, you really have to make sure you remember is that we can add entire equations. And when we do add equations, we add the left-hand side to the left-hand side and the right-hand side to the right-hand side. And what I often encourage students to do is that if they are doing addition or subtraction, um, make sure that once you're ready to do addition or subtraction, draw a big line underneath and then put a bracket around what you are adding or subtracting just to make sure that if you are subtracting, you're subtracting each term. Um, with addition, there's typically not as big of an issue, but um, with subtraction, that can definitely pay off and avoid some of those little algebra mistakes. So I'm going to solve this one. And in order for elimination to work, the variables need to eliminate. And really what that means is that we have to manipulate these formulas so that when we add or subtract them, um, we get rid of a variable. With quadratic systems of equations, typically you want to eliminate the variable that has the exponent one, which is usually why, um, because of typically how we do it on a calculator. Now, really what that means is because equation one, the one that I'm boxing here in red, has a term two y in it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation that I'm boxing in blue, and I'm going to multiply the entire equation. So both sides of the equal sign by whatever number required to get the same coefficient. Now, the coefficient in the red box on the y variable is two, so I'm going to multiply the blue box here by two. And that will give me my 2y. Now, when I do that, my blue equation, I'm going to try to color code them for the rest now. I would have 4x squared plus 2x is equal to 2y minus 8. Very important to distribute that 2 onto each and every term as we would normally. Um, the, the red equation I haven't changed, so I'm going to keep it as 6x squared minus 3x is equal to 2y minus 5. Now, because those two terms that contain the y have exactly the same coefficient, if it's exactly the same, you subtract. If they're additive inverses of each other, so if I had a negative 2 and a positive 2, I would add them with the intent of getting a 0y in my res result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that red equation from the blue equation, and we're just going to work through this term by term. I'm going to write it out for this one, and then I probably won't for the next example. So what this is going to look like is 4x squared minus 6x squared plus 2x, and I'm going to be really, really diligent here, and I'm going to put minus negative 3x. That is typically where the algebra goes a little bit south for students here. And then my right-hand side is going to be 2y minus 2y, and then minus 8 minus negative 5. All right, so definitely some important stuff happening there. All I'm doing here is I'm taking the terms from the blue equation. I'm going to underline them here. So a blue 4x squared, a blue 2x, a blue 2y, a blue negative 8. And then I'm subtracting all of these red terms. And that's really important that on either side of that equation sign, I'm taking the top equation in blue and I'm subtracting the bottom equation in red. Now, what we do is, if we've done this correctly, and we have, I'm, I'm pretty confident, um, we are just going to clean up and collect our like terms. Well, 4x squared minus 6x squared is negative 2x squared. Um, 2x minus negative 3x is positive 5x. 2y minus 2y. I'm going to write it even though it always makes my skin crawl a little bit. That is 0y. And then negative 8 minus negative 5 is negative 3. Now, I wrote that just to show where that y term went. You should never write 0y because 0 times anything is 0. So what this equation becomes is negative 2x squared plus 5x is equal to negative 3. And that's why this technique gets the name elimination because we have eliminated the y variable. And now what we have is an equation in terms of one variable that is likely to be linear or in this case quadratic. And we can solve that because it is quadratic. I'm going to get one side equal to zero by moving my 2x squared and my 5x to the other side. I like to have my x squared term positive. That's why I'm going to the right hand side. I get that zero is equal to 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. And because this is quadratic, I do need to factor it. To factor this, I'll write my little t-chart over here, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 6, that's the 2 times the negative 3, because the a isn't 1, and the same two numbers have to add to negative 5, the coefficient on my x variable. Those two numbers are negative 6 and positive 1. Um, it is the trickier factoring, it's called decomposition, where I'm going to rewrite the middle term using the two numbers we just determined. So 0 is equal to 2x squared, the order doesn't matter. So negative 6x plus, I'm going to write 1x just to make sure we see it. And then the decomposition, the next step is grouping. 
the factor that I can take out of 2x squared and 6x is 2x. That leaves me with x minus 3. And even though it feels a little weird to write, I'm going to write this second pair as 1 times x minus 3. Now, you don't need to put a 1 there, but it really does typically help students to recognize that now we have two terms which we can factor a x minus 3 out, leaving me with 2x plus 1. Because it's equal to 0, either x minus 3 is equal to 0, which yields x is equal to 3, or 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. That gives me that 2x is negative 1 or x is negative one half. Now, very many students will, will excel at doing this and they'll get the question perfectly, but it's really, really important that we remember that kind of second step or second variable. And what we need to do now, I'm just gonna steal my equation from up top here, is we need to determine what y is when x is those two numbers. And in order to do that, we are going to take these equations and unfortunately it's more complex than my smartboard is actually bugging. So it'd be interesting what the video does at this point. Um, what I'm gonna need to do is take those values of X that we just found and we're gonna have to plug them back into one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one. Um, I always recommend students choose the easiest one. And I would argue the easiest one by far is to take this equation and move the four to the other side. And we get that y is equal to 2x squared plus x plus 4. So I'm going to do that with my two x values. When x is 3, y is equal to 2 times 3 squared plus 3 plus 4. That's y is equal to 18 plus 3 plus 4. So y is equal to 25. That means the point 3 comma 25 is a solution to this system. When x is equal to negative 1 half, y is equal to 2 times negative 1 half squared plus negative one half plus four. I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this one. This is y is equal to two times one fourth plus 3.5. That's just four plus negative 1.5 there. And then this becomes y is equal to, well, two times one quarter is one half and one half plus 3.5 is four. So my two solutions are these coordinates we get three comma 25 as a solution and negative one half comma four as a solution. Okay, um, that's doing elimination just kind of as a whole technique. I am gonna do one more example uh, and then I'll post this on YouTube and hopefully this does help um, chipping away at that kind of elimination. All right, uh, this one, we actually get a choice. And the reason I say that is because for this, this is number 4D on page 452. Um, there is only a w squared. There isn't a w squared and a w. That actually makes elimination much, much simpler to do. And I'm actually going to eliminate the squared variable in this. So I'm not going to touch the, what I would often say is the larger equation. Um, because what I can do is I can take the second equation. And if I multiply everything by 9, I get 9w squared plus 9k is equal to negative 18. Now, I do want to show you a little trick because sometimes, you know, subtracting equations can be a little bit tricky. If I want to do this via addition, then what I have to do is one extra step. And I'm just going to multiply that second equation by negative one. And what that's going to give me, I haven't touched the first equation. So that's still 9w squared plus 8k is equal to negative 14. But now my second equation is negative 9w squared minus 9k is equal to positive 18. And the reason why this is a little bit simpler is 9w minus negative 9w is 18w squared. Sorry, I said w there. Um, that's not going to work. But if I add this equation, what's 9w plus negative? Sorry, what's 9w squared plus negative 9w squared? That's 0w squared. Um, 8k plus negative 9k is negative 1k. And negative 14 plus 18 is positive 4. Uh, I wrote the 0w squared again, but as you work through these, you do not need to include that. So I have negative k is equal to 4. When I divide by negative 1, I, have that k, I get that k is equal to negative 4. Now, again, common problem is that students will get that answer and then forget that they have to do something else with it. I need to take that value of k and solve for w. I'm going to use that top equation. So 9w squared plus 8 times negative 4 is equal to negative 14. I get 9w squared minus 32 is equal to negative 14. I'm going to add that 32 to the other side. I get that 9w squared is equal to um, negative 14 plus, that's 18, which means I can divide by 9. I get that w squared is equal to 2. And here is the important concept. Because we are solving for a squared variable, w is equal to the positive and negative root of 2. 
Now, what that means is that we get two different solutions here. Um, this one I'm not going to write as ordered pairs because it's not X and Y, it's W and K. So I'm going to put that when W is positive root 2, and we don't need to write the positive there, it's an oversight. When W is root 2, K is negative 4. And when W is negative root 2, K is still negative 4. But those two sets of answers form the solution to this systems of equations. Okay, hopefully this extra little video helped for elimination. Um, it is one of those things that takes a lot of practice, so keep chipping away at it, and keep emailing if you have problems, please.